My name is Myron Vernis, and this is my 1953 Paxton Phoenix. My dad hated cars. He just thought that they were a necessary evil. My mother never learned to drive. But they said from the time I was a little kid, I would sit on the porch and just kind of name cars as they went by. So I guess uh, somehow the gene got infected. The Paxton is kind of an inter interesting story. I have a real passion for industrial designers who did cars, and Brooke Stevens was one, is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, this is a one-off car that he designed. Uh, for the longest time, my real passion for cars was Porsche 356s. And this one kind of combines both those worlds for me. It's powered by a Porsche 356 engine, even though it was never intended to be powered by a 356 engine. And it's a Brooke Stevens design, and it was just an overall engineering tour de force for its time. So one-off, all original. I love original cars. Uh, this car has fewer than 800 original miles from 1953. It's all original to the paint and the fabrics across the board. Robert Paxton McCulloch, uh, great inventor, uh, industrialist, founded uh, Paxton Superchargers in the late 1930s, uh, marketed the first public uh, centrifugal supercharger. I think they were first installed in Graham's. Then into the 50s, the car, they were installed in Studebaker's, Ford's, um, other makes. In the early 50s, he decided he wanted to get into the grand touring car business, build a really special world-class car for the United States. So he hired his dream team. And his dream team was a guy named uh, Hoffman, Roscoe Hoffman, who did the chassis engineering for the car. Uh, Brooke Stevens to do the body who was his favorite designer also at the time, and a gentleman named Abner Doble, who was the guru of steam engines to do a steam plant. It was called Paxton Phoenix because it was going to be the return of steam power. Uh, Doble hadn't done a car in probably 30 years, but the cars he did in the 20s were just way ahead of the, their time. And uh, at the same time, he also had his company who were making superchargers, but also uh, gone into chainsaws and lawnmowers, two-stroke, big and two-stroke technology, had them working on six and eight cylinder reciprocating two-stroke engines as a possible uh, power plant for the car. And the goal was to build a car that would be a world-class car that would sell for $10,000, which in the early 50s would have been a huge amount of money. Hoffman did his magic with the chassis at the time. He bought a brand new Porsche 356, which they all felt was the most advanced passenger car chassis at the time. They bought a new one in New York, drove it to Los Angeles, and tore it apart to study it. So Hoffman built a unique chassis based on the principles he saw in the Porsche 356 that they dismantled. Uh, Stevens designed this body, which was really, again, spectacular for the time, with a retract electrically retractable hard top, uh, all kinds of unique features. Uh, all fiberglass body, the bumpers are even fiberglass. And the first time that chrome had been applied to fiberglass was in the shop. All the work was done at McCulloch Motors, which was a division of Paxton Products on Century Boulevard in Los Angeles. Uh, so Stevens uh, delivered, Hoffman delivered, Doble was never fully able to deliver. He uh, had a running prototype on a Ford 53 Ford chassis, but uh, it never really came to fruition and uh, the prototypes that they're working on internally never really came, came to work. So after spending about a million and a quarter in development, uh, McCulloch pulled the, pro pulled the plug on the project and uh, they had the leftover Porsche 356 engine and gearbox sitting on the shelf in the car they took apart and then just put it in the car. Yeah, the, the, the top is electrically retractable, but not in the typical sense as we think about it as a folding top today. It's a very simple mechanism controlled by uh, buttons uh, hidden on the dash, and uh, it just basically slides back on cables uh, powered by a reversible electric motor and nests on top of the rear deck lid. And as you can see, the profile of the top and the rear deck lid are identical. It's totally original. It's a Brooks Stevens design. It's one off. It's got the Porsche tie in. It's got the technology from the Hoffman chassis to the Doble work. This was Doble's last major, even though it didn't work out, it was Doble's last major commission. Um, so there's just so much special about this car. This car was also the genesis of something much bigger that would happen about 10 years later because when Stevens was hired to do this car for Pax and McCulloch. Uh, there was a young executive there named Sherwood Egbert 
who 10 years later would become president of Studebaker Corporation. And Studebaker, was, at the time in the early 60s, was in really bad financial positions. Uh, Egbert was really an industry outsider. He hadn't come up in the auto industry. They brought him in to help save the company. He did two things. He, he went to the, the industrial designers, brought in Raymond Lowy to design the Avanti to have kind of a signature car. But then remember the work he did with Brooke Stevens in the early 50s and brought him in to revamp their bread and butter line, to do a facelift with what they had for as little as possible and uh, try to refresh the cars that they make their money on. And it was based on the relationship they had formed over this car. At which point the GT Hawk and the Wagoneer and cars like that were born.